Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are underway. Today's Tuesday, March the 30th, 2021, and I hereby call the Subcommittee on Higher Education into order. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you please take the roll? Representative Baum? Here. Cochran? Here. Darby? Here. Gillespie? Here. Hakeem? Here. Parkinson? Here. Chairman White? Here. Chairman Lafferty? Here. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you for that. And before we get started, any personal orders, any recognitions? Okay, seeing none. Uh, a little housekeeping first. Uh, House Bill 1372 has been taken off notice. House Bill 162 has been taken off notice. House Bill 847 is off notice. And I believe that takes care of our housekeeping. Having done that, we are ready to proceed to House Bill 1246. Motion in a second, having been heard. Uh, Chair McAlfee, you are recognized. Affectionately known as the Right to Know Act for students, and it uh, it's a great thing. We should have had it a long time ago, but it uh, it basically tells kids getting out of high school what it's going to cost them to go to colleges and universities, community colleges, TCATs, other uh, trade schools that are approved by THEC, and it even addresses the option of going in the military about enlistment bonuses and uh, career options in the military. Thank you for that. And uh, Representative Calfee, we have uh, oh, an I've amendment. Oh, I've got an amendment. Okay. And the amendment number is 006234. Uh, that is and affirmative. It makes the bill. Okay, and uh, with that, we've got, uh, let's see, motion second on the amendment. So voting on the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of adding the amendment, say aye. aye. Those opposed, say no. And the ayes have it. The amendment's added to the bill. Members, uh, you've heard a brief explanation. Uh, do we have any comments? Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I'm going to speak on every bill this, this committee. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, j I just want to tell you this is a good bill. And uh, if you will, give me a sign on sheet and I'll sign on to it also. Okay. Thank That's you for that transparency. It's great. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, and, and they prefer the Marine Corps if it helps you on your vote any. You know, my vote was already solidified with you, but that, that enhances it. I'm going to vote harder now. Because of that. Thank vote you for twice. that. Right. There you go. Right. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, any, anyone else have any questions on the bill? Uh, I've got one. Uh, Representative, aren't there, I'm assuming the universities already do this. They already have this information at their fingertips in order to show their students when they This apply. is going to enhance the database and expand out to the community colleges, the TCATs, and that sort of thing. Okay, so it enhances that, and it also, it sounds like, puts the information in one place so that the kids don't Correct. have to go around to multiple Correct. locations. Good question. Thank you. Okay. Um, seeing no other questions, uh, do we, are we ready to vote? Looks like it. Uh, all those in favor of House Bill 1246, uh, please vote in favor by saying aye. aye. Any opposed say no. All right, the ayes have it. That bill will move out to uh, the full committee. Thank you, Chairman and members. And next up, item number three, House Bill 1351 by Chairman Vaughn. Is Chairman Vaughn? I, and uh, motion on the bill and second. All right, we have Chairman uh, Vaughn here recognized. Bringing to you today addresses us, the, the changing landscape of college athletics and our state's position in that competitive landscape. A few years back, the Supreme Court ruled in the Ed O'Bannon case that an athlete's name, image, and likeness is owned by that athlete, and if they're, uh, as a result, they can be compensated for the use of that. Uh, 
my, the, my name, image, and likeness story, uh, other than me appearing in a goldsmith's ad in Memphis back in the day, uh, getting uncompensated for it. Um, of course, I wasn't very athletic either. Um, the, it was my son uh, was a NCAA 2003 aficionado on, uh, on GameCube. And his number one team was the Memphis State Tigers with D'Angelo Williams. He would hand the ball off to D'Angelo, and he would typically win. But you know what? I always, even back then, I thought, that's, that's really strange that this company is profiting from these athletes' names and, and likenesses. It was the same jersey number. Uh, he had, I don't know if he had as good of moves as D'Angelo. But they were profiting from it, and yet the athletes received nothing. That was part of the O'Bannon case. The O'Bannon case was the fact that he was used in advertisements and he played, for, he played basketball for UCLA. And so his, the use of his name, image, and likeness, he brought forward all the way to the Supreme Court, and it was made law of the land that, yes, athletes can be uh, paid for it. So you fast forward ahead, and what's been happening since then? Well, there's been a lot of conversation in, uh, in the NCAA ranks, and that's what the NCAA gives you is a lot of conversation. Uh, they have proffered a few rules very broad guidelines, but they're saying, hey, we're going to come back later and give you more of those. In the meantime, we've seen California pass a bill, we've seen Florida pass a bill, and that's the key point that I want to have you all hone in on. But other states are starting to move in this area with regards to athletes, name, image, and likeness. And, and from my standpoint, if, if a young person can't capitalize on who they are and this by the sweat, made themselves into by the sweat of their brow, what what else can be capitalistic? So what this bill does is this provides a broad framework that our institutions throughout the state can use as guidelines and guide, guardrails to how to institute these programs uh, with regards to the compensation by third parties. That's a very other critical part of this is third party compensation. This is not as a result of the universities are not going to be involved in this business. If you think about it, universities have all sorts of talented people on their campus. They may have a, somebody who is a student at their school who also gets paid for being an actor. They may have a concert, a, a talented musician who's very good at, at their craft, and they have jobs that allow them to get paid while they're in school, but the school doesn't pay them for that. It's third parties. So what this, sets, this bill contemplates is how does a third party and an athlete and an institution all get along together in the marketplace and not get anybody afoul of one another. That's, that's what we're doing is we're setting that up here. The reason I said that Florida is an a interesting case is that, number one, uh, one of our, two of our larger institutions in the school have just recently hired athletic directors from Florida. They understand this concept because they were adhering to it in, in their previous employer. But here's another thing to consider in that case is the fact that it, Florida uh, has SEC schools and they have Atlantic Athletic Conference schools. So what you would see is, is all Division I schools in our state see competition from Florida. This would help level the playing field when it comes to the same student athlete experience being offered in a variety of these places. You know, in the past, we've talked about the NCAA and, and their, uh, what some of us consider to be their oppressive activities and whether or not they're, um, they're tied into an archaic model. But and how we deal with that, and, and we see two extremes. And this bill contemplates two extremes, frankly. Number one, it ex if you think about it from the the three larger institutions in the state, you have James Wiseman, who was an athlete uh, who's done, been very successful. We've had, well, for uh, when I think of Vanderbilt, the, the, the most uh, renowned athlete they've had most successful here lately has been Kumar Rocker, their pitcher that pitched so well for them. And then UT, you can just pick Peyton Manning or Alvin Kamara wasn't as famous as he was then as he is now, and that could be a story for another day. But all of these athletes people knew were stars when they were in college, and so they had value. But here's, other, here's another contemplation for you. As our bill addresses the needs for, let's say that there is a 
young lady from rural West Tennessee who's a standout for a major university. Let's say the local car dealer likes some things that she's done during her career and wants her to hold her out as a role model to, and for all the little girls in the community to come get their picture made with her. This, this allows for a situation like that to be simplistic enough to where it can handle somebody of that renowned high end or from somebody whose local car dealer wants to invite the local kids to come by and get their picture made with them and are allowed to pay $500 or so and issue a 1099 for that day's work. So we're, what we're doing is we're laying the framework for a variety of competitors who, based upon their success in athletics, to be able to capture on the marketing of their own image. And that's a long way of saying, but we've, just so the committee knows, this is not something we've taken lightly. Um, I've been working on this for almost a year with a lot of input from a lot of different stakeholders to make sure that we're comfortable with what's happening here. And so with that, uh, I'll stand for any questions. I'm sure there will be some. Thank you for that. And uh, I've made a habit of this, adding amendments after the presentation. Uh, you have an amendment to go on this bill? Yes, sir, I sure did. It's amendment uh, 6220. That's what I have. Uh, motion on amendment. Uh, let's vote on the amendment then. Uh, all those in favor of adding the amendment to the bill, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. No, I have it. Amendment's on the bill. Uh, do we have questions? Chairman White, please. Thank you. By the way, I would be glad to add an amendment to make this retroactive for former university mascots. <laughs> so, you, so, you, so you can... You know, it wasn't right that I didn't get paid either. That's know, all it, I'm it, telling it, you. It was, let's go. How many years we need to go back on this? Oh, well, that's a long time. <laughs> my, my question is this, and this is great because y'all have... We've talked about this for a couple of years and you work, put a lot of work on this. So is it my understanding, just for clarity, that the, when the NCAA ruling was that they would kind of leave it to the states. Is that a correct statement? Well, what they, what they have said, that there's a big cauldron of activity happening on a national level with this. The NCAA said, here's some really broad guidance, but they didn't say much. It, they did the typical NCAA thing of saying, well, you might could do that, and we'll you figure it out, and we'll be, we'll be back with you. In the meantime, their, argue, their antitrust existence in, is being argued in front of the Supreme Court next month. The Congress has, has, you know, the best effect, the best thing that could happen is a federal resolution to this matter. But given the change that has occurred in the makeup of Congress, the, the White House, the, everything else that's on the, on the picture, we see this as being something that uh, we may not have resolution to for a couple of years. What we're trying to do is to prepare our universities to be on level playing field with their counterparts from other parts of the country that have also passed such legislation. So I think you just answered my question. So for us to do nothing would put us at a disadvantage with other states that are. That is correct, sir. Thank you. Uh, Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm the number two uh, signature on this bill. Um, but I, would, I do, I am going to point out to y'all and Chairman White that I ran this bill two years in a row and y'all killed it. And so my, my counterpart from Shelby County, who I appreciate for running it, if, we, if it means we get it passed because my counterpart from Shelby County is running it, I'm still okay with it. But this is a classic sign of bill jacking and I want to put it on the record, but but you know, but I'm with it. I'm the number two signature. My my thing is this. No, seriously, and I want and I think this is a a, a good uh, learning opportunity for all of us. You know, if it's good legislation, it's good legislation. You know, let's support good legislation. I don't care who runs it. Honestly, you know, I don't. I'm all the way in with you, 100 percent, because this is something that we need to be done. I made that argument uh, about the fact that we want to get this done in time for us to have an advantage for in recruiting. And, 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 and it's still a solid argument. You know, uh, we made the argument that, that, you know, our children were being exploited, and it's still a solid argument. You know, we made the argument that, that 
the environment was changing. Great, great point. I'm with you 100%. But to my colleagues, I say, it doesn't matter if it's a Democrat carrying the bill or a Republican carrying the bill. You know, if it's good legislation, let's support good legislation and, and let's not be political because we could have had athletes last year or the year before that, that that took advantage of this opportunity that did not get a chance to take advantage of the opportunity or a mascot maybe, right? But but we want, let's please, y'all, um, and, and I'm appealing, you know, to everyone on, the, on this, on the dais up here, let's just support good legislation. And, and let's all get behind good legislation. And, and especially when it's legislation coming from the Shelby delegation. We should all get behind legislation coming from the Shelby delegation, guys, because it's the Shelby delegation. I'm just giving you a hard time, but, but please, let's do that. Thank you for bringing the, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Chairman. I'm, I, I appreciate you bringing this legislation because we got to get it done, and I'm, I'm with you all the way. Uh, you're recognized, Chairman. Thank Bond. you, Mr. Chairman. If you could allow me a retort. Uh, this, to this topic deals with the same topic your legislation last year was attempting to deal with. This is a different version of the bill, and really what I'm asking, the, the words on this piece of paper have been thoroughly reviewed with all of the stakeholders involved. I wouldn't consider having a bill on the same subject matter as being Bill Jack and sir. I'll, that's... I'll just leave it at that. I still want you, I still would like for my co-sponsor to vote in the affirmative. Though. <laughs> and I've, I've got a question. Yes, sir. Are there going to be limits? Uh, obviously, if Peyton Manning's going to draw a lot more dollars than the young lady that's selling photographs uh, at the car dealership. Any conversations around that? Any thoughts you could share? No, sir, because uh, in a capitalistic society, the value of one's... Uh, image and, and the work and the uh, and what happens in uh, one place may not be the same as another and so no we're, we're not we're not contemplating capping this we're not want to put, we don't want to put that restriction on them and but I will say this is that you know when when back when I was in school athletic budgets and TV contracts were millions of dollars it's it's billions of dollars now it's billions of dollars and for the folks that are an integral part of this, for them not to be able to capitalize off the work of the sweat of their brow just seems, uh, seems untoward for me. And I think that it, given the fact that the Supreme Court agrees with it, then this is our way of implementing that Supreme Court decision. Members, any other questions? Uh, Representative Baum, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If your bill permits an athlete to, to take advantage of, of something, maybe financially, and the NCAA says that that athlete can't, then how do you determine which set of rules wins? What we believe will happen, uh, Representative Baum, is that, by the way, and every time they call your name on the House floor, my seatmate can attest the fact that I think I've missed out, on, I've forgotten where I am on the program. Um, what we, the goal of this legislation is not to drive them into NCAA violations, but we do believe there's a changing landscape. Some of this will be, this bill takes effect January 1 of 2022. With all of the difference that we've seen in the, in the landscape between January 1 of 2020 to today, it's been cataclysm or just tectonic plate shifting. We think that by the time that 2022 gets here, January 1, that, um, that we'll see the NCAA will, as an old friend of mine used to say, will have their head right. Uh, e either that or they will be reeling from their antitrust decision with the Supreme Court that the Solicitor General was arguing in front of them. Or they, um, Congress will have acted. What we will be, frankly, we'll be in, in third standing and we think that the NCAA will have had to deal with this in other places. This legislation is being considered all over the country right now. Okay. So we, we we're hope not, we're not we're not going to vote them into an NCAA violation. That's what that that is a concern. Right. And my my concern my question just basically had to do with if the state says you can and the NCAA says you can't, who wins? The NCAA is not. The NCAA will have to determine then how you can comply. 
because they are under a court order. Representative Parkinson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I was, I was, you know, going to say, and I said this last year, um, you know, the, the, it, it's interesting because a lot of, a lot of times, and, and I was too, we were separating the NCAA from the universities as it's, a, it's an organization, but that tells the universities basically what the rules are. But the NCAA is the universities. It's, it, it's made up of the universities. And, and, and I would, you know, uh, say, and I said it before on the record also, the NCAA can make up any rules they want to make up, but they don't, they don't trump state law. You know, we, we say what we want to do in Tennessee. And the NCAA, if it's going to operate in Tennessee, needs to follow the state law in Tennessee. And, and, and I appreciate that's another reason why I appreciate us, you know, moving in this, in this direction, uh, because uh, we shouldn't be, you know, some of the argument last year and the year before was that, you know, we'll, we'll run afoul of NCAA rules. But NCAA does not trump what, what we vote on and say it's going to be the law in Tennessee. And so, and we need to act like that. We're, we're the boss, not the NCAA. And so thank, thank you again, um, Mr. Chairman, for bringing that. I was a little confused as to the start. Is there, can you tell us just a little bit more about the start? We, right now, the start contemplated this is January 1st of 2022. What that does, it, there's some, there's some aspects. Florida starts in July of 2021, but our institute, what will, there's two ways of looking at this. Either th you can look at it from a standpoint of our institutions will have time to implement and consider opportunities to build a framework on how to advise their student athletes to comply with this law, as well as NCAA guidelines, or it could be that we're going to let Florida get out on that limb and see what happens. That could be another, that, that's another practical matter of it. So just for clarity, so do we start before Florida or after Florida? I'm sorry. Right now we're after Florida. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still considering whether or not we might need to amend it going forward to where it has a July 1, 2021 date. That's, that's a conversation, but we know that the institutions are comfortable in complying at January 1, 2022. So we're, we feel comfortable where we are, but uh, with more conversation, if the General Assembly decided that they preferred 2021, July 1, to mirror Florida's law, I think we could probably accommodate that as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I don't know if, you know, if or how we do this or if I'm going to get ran out of here with rakes and pitchforks, but I sure would like to get to jump on Florida if it were at all possible to add to, to the bill to give us an, a, uh, an advantage because we know it's coming. Well, I, I would think that uh, uh, we can review this conversation and topics further with our with our institutions because what what we don't want to do with them they're not I want, I want to say this too they have been great partners in this legislation they have not been driving the bus they have I told them that I felt committed to I felt like it was the right thing to do for our athletes um, they have been they have been a great source of conversation of thought in this of predicting pitfalls of working with us to keep us from painting them into a corner. Uh, they've, uh, they have uh, really gone the extra mile. We spent a lot of time on this. And so I don't want to leave them out of the conversation moving forward of the understanding what the pitfalls of that 2021 date is. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and, and thank you, Mr. Chair, also. Uh, uh, let's, then let's, let's just go and get the bill on the books. And then, and then we, if we need to come back and revisit it, we'll do that. Okay? Yes, thank sir. you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Uh, last one. I'm sure I know the answer, but this is not limiting to Tennessee kids. This is recruits from all over the country. It's student athletes enrolled in our university. Student athletes enrolled. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other questions, I believe we're ready to vote on this bill. All those in favor of passing House Bill 1351 as amended onto the full committee, vote by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, congratulations. You're moving on you, full. Sir. Next on the calendar, 
We have uh, item number five by Representative Towns, House Bill 1491. If he's out there in the lobby and can hear us, come on down. We'll go ahead and, uh, oh, here he comes. I have a motion on, and a second. Good day, Representative Towns. Uh, doing well, thanks. And I don't think we have an amendment to add on to this one. Uh, you are recognized, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, may I ask you a question as it relates to, uh, and uh, talking to Chairman Parkson as well, if you don't mind, sir, as it relates to the last bill that just left, how does that, is that similar to the bill that we have, Mr. Chairman Parkson? What is it? It's, it's all right. Uh, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. For Representative that. Parkinson, uh, I'll let you address that. Same bill. So... If it's the same bill, because we, we dealt with, I think, uh, Chairman Parks and myself both dealt with it last year, and we were asked to wait, da da da. But if the bill, the previous bill, is accomplishing what we want to accomplish, Chairman Parks, and if it's accomplishing what we talked about last year, that, and you're comfortable with that? I, I am. Uh, if Mr. You're recognized. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, I am, and uh, I actually signed on to his bill because yours is not going to get through, mine is not going to get through, but his is. So I recommend that you sign on. So you're psychic, and I will take yes, your sir. advice. Yes, my, yes, yes. <laughs> Call me now. You're right, all right. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> with that, Mr. Chairman, we'll be signing on to the bill. We'll take this one off notice, okay? All right, thank you for that. Uh, Chairman White, I believe you had a uh, comment or a question. I <laughs> just say cor correction. Parkinson's may get, not get through, but yours may. <laughs> <laughs> my man. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Off notice, sir. Thank you, Representative Towns. <laughs> Moving right along. That brings us to item number seven, House Bill 752 by Chairman White. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second on the bill. Uh, it does look like we have amendments as well. Motion on the amendment. Okay. Yes, sir. What we, if I may explain this, the last amendment that we have on our mark calendar is 6070. About 10 minutes before I came in, let me go back. Everybody probably remembers this from last week. We were discussing the lottery calendar. If I may go ahead and explain, Chairman, uh, what the bill, bill does on 6070, and we are working on another amendment. We had the discussion. This adds, pays for all four dual enrollment courses through our TBR system in our community colleges. <laughs> We rolled it from last week. We were dealing with looking at the, the cap on our uh, lottery funds and things of that, which, which was at the time, we were talking about $5 million. After we rolled it, uh, we talked more to TBR. This is a very important bill for our community colleges and for our students. Currently, we are paying for two dual enrollment courses, plus about $200 left over, which is not enough for to take a third course. This bill would pay for all four dual enrollment courses. Now, in the amendment 6070, it's, it, it, it's got it split up where it will pay for three in 21, 22, and for one more, or the fourth one in 22, 23. It is the uh, will of TBR who brought this to me that we pay for, do all four in the 2022, 2023 uh, year. And uh, so that will be the amendment that will be coming. And I guess if it's the will of the committee, we'd, we would could look at that for a full committee. But I think after having conversations with uh, TBR and leadership that it may be the will of the committee to go ahead and pass this out so that we can cover uh, through um, all four courses for our, our lot for our uh, universe, excuse me, our community colleges. With that, I, any explanation, we need to go from there. But there will be another amendment coming to committee.
Okay. Thank you, Chairman. You recognize? Uh, it has been suggested f for the committee we need to withdraw Amendment 4231, which is a typographical amendment that was put on earlier. And also, we withdraw 6070, which is an amendment I just mentioned, uh, which then leaves the bill clean, and we'll add a amendment <clears throat> going forward, which is I just described. Members, what that amendment would be, if it's the will of the committee to move on from here, is that in the 22-23 uh, academic year, we would the uh, state would fund all four dual enrollment courses. Am I, I hope I'm explaining this correctly. Do we have TBR on the list? We don't. Am I close enough? <laughs> okay. All right. So that's what we knew. But so I will. I move to withdraw amendments uh, four two three one and amendment six zero seven zero and pass the bill as unamended. So. Just to recap, this committee does not need to take any action to withdraw the amendments. Let me make sure that I have a motion and a second on the bill. Okay, so, all right, so we've got that taken care of. Chairman White, would you like to present House Bill 752? Yeah, 752 is what I explained, which I may, I'm looking at TBR, and I think I may not have it exactly right. But what we want to do is fund four dual enrollment courses for our high school students going into uh, the uh, higher education university or the uh, community college system of TBR. And so we will have an amendment ready next time, because it was just about five minutes before I came in here. But that's what we're, we're doing. And it would be the... Uh, the fiscal note would, I think, would stay the same, but we're splitting it up next year so that it doesn't hit our hit our lottery funds this year. Thank you for Does that. That makes sense. Uh, Representative Hakeem, you have a question? Question on the bill. Uh, no further questions, then uh, we'll go ahead and vote on the bill. All those in favor of House Bill 752 moving on to higher ed, uh, I'm sorry, moving on to full committee, express so by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. All right, the ayes have it. Thank you. Having had a recent conversation with Representative Shaw on House Bill 1101, uh, that bill has been taken off notice. That concludes our calendar. Uh, does anyone have anything to add? Uh, thoughts or comments? I'll, I'll throw out one. Uh, Expect we'll be doing some work on that uh, NCAA college students bill going forward. All right. Thank you all for your participation today. Thank you for being here. Have a good afternoon. We are adjourned. Oh, oh I'm sorry. At the call of the chair, this is our last meeting. <laughs>